Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Django Cohen and today I will give you an overview about the upcoming financial aid process for graduating seniors. In the presentation, I will cover key terminology, application types and details, as well as scholarship information. As a reminder, here are the four categories of financial aid that students may receive. Grants are considered gift aid, awarded based on a student's financial need. Scholarships may either be merit or need-based and also do not need to be repaid. Loans may come from the state or government through the FAFSA, California Dream Act, or private loan companies. And federal work study is need-based, comes from the FAFSA or California Dream Act, and funds part-time employment for students to help pay for their educational expenses. Other key terms include the FSA ID or Federal Student Aid ID. This is the username and password combination that students and families create to log into the FAFSA website. The Student Aid Index or SAI is the number calculated from the data that a family inputs on the FAFSA application and indicates a family's level of financial need. A lower number will indicate a higher level of need. Numbers will range between negative 1,500 and up to 999,999. In your research, you may see the acronym COA, which means cost of attendance. The COA covers every possible expense that may be necessary for a student to attend college. So this could include tuition, fees, books, meal plans, housing, and transportation. And to tie it all together, colleges will determine a family's financial need with this equation. Colleges use their specific COA, or cost of attendance, subtract a student's SAI number from the COA, and they are then left with a final number indicating a student's financial need. This information is provided on the financial aid package students receive following an acceptance to a college. It can also be beneficial for students and families to calculate how much a college will cost prior to applying. This can help applicants gauge if a school is within financial reach. Net price calculators are useful tools to support this goal and are available on college websites. First, students are asked to enter general information about themselves, then data from similar students from previous years is used to show what a prospective student may expect to pay for college. The term net price means the amount a student pays in a single academic year after subtracting their scholarships and grants. Now there are three financial aid applications for families to be aware of. The FAFSA, California Dream Act or CADA, and CSS Profile. The FAFSA provides aid from both state and federal governments, and students must be U.S. citizens to use this application. The CADA also provides state and federal aid, and only non-U.S. citizens may complete this application. The CSS profile provides institutional aid from each individual college, and all applicants, regardless of citizenship, should complete the CSS profile if applicable. This application may be required in addition to the FAFSA or CADA, depending on the school a student is applying to. And I'll speak more to this in a few minutes. Each of the applications we discussed will have specific deadlines. The FAFSA and CADA open December 1st, and students are encouraged to complete the application as early as possible. March 2nd is the priority deadline for students to be eligible for Cal grants, which are grants funded by the state of California. Now the CSS profile deadline will differ for every college requiring it. So students should review this information on individual college websites. Often the CSS profile is due at the same time as a school's application deadline as well. So let's dive a little deeper into the FAFSA now. Again, only students who are U.S. citizens may complete the FAFSA. The citizenship of the parent does not matter. Students and their contributors will each need to make their own account 
to obtain a federal student aid ID or the FSA ID, a term we spoke about in a previous slide. Contributors are the people, parents, or step-parents who the child resides with most frequently. If parents are married and file jointly for their taxes, only one contributor will be needed. Even though the application does not open until December 1st, students and contributors may each create their own FSA IDs now, and it's beneficial to do so since it can take a few days to process. Once a student obtains an FSA ID, they may begin their application. Within the application, there will be a section allowing them to invite their contributors to complete their section of the FAFSA application. This is how student and contributor information become linked. I included a resource link to the email this video came from, so I welcome you to read more about contributors from there. Now for information on the California DREAM Act. Students should complete this application if they are undocumented, do not qualify for the FAFSA, they have attended at least three years of high school in California, plan to graduate from a California high school, and are applying to a qualifying California college. Students will be eligible to receive state aid, institutional aid, and scholarships through the California DREAM Act. The California Student Aid Commission offers ongoing workshops to shed more light on the CADA. The link to register for these workshops is located in the resource section of the email this video came from. I also want to acknowledge that there may be questions or concerns about completing this form due, that, due to the upcoming changes that could take place due to the election results. We did receive messaging from the California Student Aid Commission, which I will read to you here. California is a sanctuary state and California's financial aid programs remain fully available and accessible to you. Your information remains protected with us. So this is the messaging we have received thus far and we are currently seeking further guidance on the topic. Please feel free to speak to me or um, other staff or principals administration here at the high school if you do have questions. Okay, the CSS profile is unique in that only certain private and large budget public colleges will require it. The CSS profile is organized by College Board, so students may log into their College Board account to explore if the CSS profile is necessary for them. The website will list the colleges requiring the application so students may plan accordingly. The CSS profile does have a fee involved and this is $25 for the first college and $16 for each additional college. The good news is that families who make up to $100,000 annually may receive fee waivers. And again, students and families will complete the CSS profile in addition to the FAFSA or the California DREAM Act. Let's discuss another form of aid now, scholarships. There are many ways to apply for and receive scholarships. Students may receive California state scholarships called Cal Grants through the FAFSA or CADA. Students may also receive institutional scholarships through the CSS profile. Here in Tahoe, we are super lucky to have the Tahoe Truckee Community Scholarship Foundation, which provides hundreds of thousands of dollars in scholarships to seniors each year. Students must complete one application through this program, and they are then given consideration for the many scholarships available. We'll be providing more information about this process following winter break. Additionally, students may engage in their own research through scholarship search databases, such as fastweb.com, scholarships.com, Big Future through the College Board, and there are many, many more. Students may be eligible for scholarships through a range of criteria. These may include awards for their academic achievement, extracurricular participation, leadership, community service, or through their chosen career path or major. Students may also receive scholarships for reasons that are considered situation-based. This could include membership within an underrepresented group 
or an affiliation with the military, to name a couple. Basically, scholarships are available for all types of students, so it's important to put yourself in the running and apply through multiple avenues. So I hope you enjoyed this financial aid overview. And if you would like to learn more, I invite you to an in-person financial aid night that will be held at North Tahoe High School in January. The date is to be determined, but it will be at 5.30 p.m. At this event, we will run two presentations simultaneously. One will be in English and one will be in Spanish. Afterwards, we will then invite students and families to stay and create and work through either the FAFSA or the California DREAM Act with the assistance of staff. And prior to the event, we would ask that families try to create their FSA ID. This will give you a head start and the chance to move further along in our workshop. Again, if you do have questions or concerns about this, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you again for joining me today and I look forward to connecting with you soon.